Okay, uh, sir, I am saying that uh, I have posted a quiz on daily basis, depending on uh, the uh, lecture delivered uh, on, on per day. So we uh, design uh, uh, a quiz of five questions. Uh, I think uh, uh, I have posted a comment in the WhatsApp as well as uh, in the Google Classroom that uh, we count all these uh, marks obtained by students and keep the average of all the quizzes. And uh, we will provide uh, the average marks in the certificates too. If it is, it is okay, then uh, we will uh, continue in this way. If you uh, suggest any modification in this uh, process that I have posted without any consultation with the resource persons, so then we can modify it also. So okay. the basic aim behind it is to keep students uh, uh, working or practice uh, on uh, the, what we have taught to them. And at parents, um, one thing more, fact, uh, one thing more, uh, 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 Mr. Ma'am has suggested that uh, students should practice uh, Excel uh, by opening Excel window in, on their PC or the laptops when we are uh, demonstrating it. So uh, uh, I have also posted a comment on it that uh, students should try at least one exercise and record it. Then, uh, then we will get that what they have uh, gained. If they face some problem, they can share with us. We will uh, guide them right now. Else, after uh, uh, over, um, over this workshop, if they find some problem, uh, uh, then it will be difficult to contact all the source persons at a time. Uh, may I come in? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, my suggestion is that please don't give marks on the certificate, get some kind of a grade or okay. some kind of, you know, uh, good, very good, excellent. Uh, something like that, that I think will be very encouraging. It looks very nice. Uh, okay. Certificate itself. Okay. Second is that, uh, as I was telling, that we should have this classroom available to students for next 30 days. And maybe if uh, uh, my uh, team members uh, agree, daily we can put one exercise there for the students to do. Mm. Okay. Right, and let them try that. Let them post that on the web with the, with the result of the uh, spreadsheet. And maybe after about one month, they will feel very happy about it that they have progressed very nicely. Uh, okay. so I think uh, that will be a better way of looking at these things. They will get enough time to explore. You can keep on encouraging them also uh, on the in the classroom that they are doing very well. Or if there are any problems also, you know, they can post it. And maybe we can try to together uh, suggest them something there if we will be knowing. Sometimes we also do not know, you know. But please do remember that also. <laughs> uh, but okay, we will try to find out so that effort can be done. If you agree, then this can be definitely continued in the in the class. Your mic is off, Kulvinderji. Thank you, sir. Sorry. Uh, Harpreet, ma'am, are you there? Uh, uh, Haji, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Please uh, introduce the resource person and we that we shall continue. Good morning, everyone. So, today we have uh, a speaker morning, from the last morning. session, uh, Dr. Sapna Sharma. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, so I invite her to uh, begin with today's talk. Okay. So thank you, uh, Professor Hartpreet. I will start uh, with my talk. And I would like to request you to kindly switch off your mics so that there is no disturbance. And uh, good evening, everybody. Let me start uh, with my presentation directly. And uh, I would like to continue from my last lecture, I would like to take few uh, minutes to talk about the graphs part only, and then I'll start the next presentation. So I'm sharing my screen.
with you and uh, let me open this uh, ex- because there were certain questions actually yesterday so i want to address those questions uh okay so day 2 so i'm going to take this example uh one of the question uh, in from yesterday's lecture was that uh, can we draw two or three graphs uh, uh together simultaneously can, can we have it on our screen so uh, this is i'm going to show you how we can have two or three graphs together so can you see the screen can you see my screen can you see that spreadsheet yes okay so uh, let me i have taken a random uh, data again suppose i am plotting a graph between distance and time and i have taken three samples of uh, distances for this time period so uh, these values are just uh, uh, random values so maybe you will get a different type of uh, graphs but the idea here is how three graphs can come together because i have taken three values distance 1 distance 2 and distance 3 so we can plot them simultaneously here so this is actually the graph number 1 uh, the which i have plotted so that uh, method was simple i have uh, selected these two columns insert key and then i have taken scatter plot and uh, let me take this one and i get this type of a line so it says series 1 now i want the time and the distance too so what i should i do i go on this uh, graph one of the way is then i select data from here okay now if you select data from there you will find this is written as series 1 series 1 means that uh, the first one i can edit this name also i can edit it i can put here uh, distance 1 okay so this is there first now i want to add next data so i'll click on add series name i'll say distance 2 okay the value x value so my x value is this uh this one sorry i have selected this sorry i should okay let me put okay here and now remove this so in place of distance i have got a series i have got distance one so i go here select data this is the step add now i'm adding the next part Say distance two for x value. I will select the data. This is my x-axis, so I select this. It comes here. The address comes here. Okay. Similarly, I can select my uh, uh, y data also, y value. So I say here equal, and I select my this value. This is distance two, which is my. by value and i say okay and you will find that distance 2 is there and i i get the second graph also the red one which is representing the distance 2 maybe you will find the graphs uh, very funny type of a graph but the values are these so i get these two graph blue is for distance 1 red is for distance 2 similarly again if i'll go here and add so again i go and select the data add so i can add number of the graphs number of uh, data from here and distance 3 i am taking here and the long x axis again i choose my x axis as this and uh, for y axis i go and choose this distance 3 so it's there so you can see that i have got a green graph which is representing the distance 3 okay so i have plotted the three graphs together so that we can compare the graphs now so one thing is this the other thing is this that uh, now this uh, i can uh, say make it more attractive or interactive so i'll just click on this go to uh, layout and i can add the chart title so above chart if i want i will click above chart here i can give the title say uh, distance versus 
time graph. So I say distance versus time. So my title will be uh, will, will appear here. Okay. Again, if I want uh, the x axis and y axis title, I can go here. Primary horizontal axis title. So x axis I will type here. Title below. I will. I can choose here. Title below the axis. I can plot here. Uh, time. So I can write here time, and then along uh, for y axis, I can uh, again go here axis title, primary vertical axis, vertical title or horizontal title. I can put here uh, the name as distance. Okay, so I have got this distance versus time graph. And uh, here, the, this is a legend which is showing me blue line is for distance. If I have more than one value, I can keep it so that this uh, is uh, uh, available to us, the information. The, this is known as legend and we can say modify this also. Now, this is, uh, you can modify the your graph. Suppose I click here on the axis. You can change the value of axis. Uh, for here, if I will click on axis, One minute. So format axis will come. Okay, so you can format your axis. Here the options are going to come. You can fix the lower limit, upper limit. You can change these values for your x axis. Simil uh, this is for vertical axis. Similarly, you can have it for horizontal axis format axis. Okay, you can even change the colors here. You because if you click here, you will get the format uh, data series. So you can do all these things uh, for your graph in this case. So this was the question which was asked yesterday: how we can have two three graphs simultaneously on one uh, the point. So this is a way we do it. There was a, another question which I wanted to take. So is this clear? This part is clear. So can I proceed further? Uh, excuse me, madam. Uh, uh, if we uh, select all the data on the Excel sheet and then uh, in, uh, insert graph, uh, scatter or this thing, uh, can, can we plot then uh, this uh, whole graph? If we select See, all the data. Suppose you mean to say you said you select you have selected I have selected all the thing. Now you can see that what type of a data you can you can always go and play with this and check what type of a graph you want okay so i have i, I know, you see you, you have got this graph here. you can always have this like this series 1 2 3 you can modify it you can always have it like that also is it fine sir you can have it like that also only one suggestion sapna yes sir actually yesterday we said that you if you select all these together then uh, you actually sometimes find it very difficult to, you know, show individual graphs separately. What Sapna showed today is that out of a number of columns which you have got, you can always select the x-axis versus any other column independently without hiding the columns. Otherwise, if you select everything together, then what will no you notice is everything will come which you may not desire. What Sapna explained today is wonderful way of selecting only those items which you desire to be shown on the graph. And the rest is formatting part one. Yeah, I mean, I mean, once you start working on your Excel sheet, you can decide with what type of things you need, need to know and what type of things you have to plot. And you can you can take your own decisions later on. Uh, now, see that there is another way of selecting the thing. You can put your cursor here. These are the small tricks actually, and select this uh, part, this column with the control uh, button, pressed control button. One, and if I want a graph between this and this distance too, so I can select this by con pressing the control key. And I can, sorry. So I have to do it simultaneously, one this and then this. So I've selected these two columns and I, I can plot a graph uh, between these two things, distance one and distance two. Oh, no, sorry, I'll take this and plot this. I think some values have left. So you can do this type of a graphing here in this. I mean, there are lots of lots of things uh, in available in Excel. You can actually uh, go and explore the things. 
and uh, one question was that uh, can we, how do we calculate the factorial part so uh, maybe that i'll take later on let me start with my second uh, presentation so if you don't if you have any question you please ask otherwise i'll start with the second presentation uh, hello and yes. uh, ma'am uh, can you go to the uh, graph that you have just plotted sir okay yes sir sir if uh, as arun said that if we hide one column then that graph will disappear sir uh, sir said that suppose i i don't i want to plot uh, the graph between time and say distance 3 okay i don't need it distance one so i will go and click it here there is a option height right. just click it uh, distance okay. one has gone so the graph has already gone okay so now i can hide okay. the second column also and i can unhide it I, I, if i say there is a option here unhide i can unhide it this is going to come uh i think that column is but see that is not shown on the but wait wait and hide pardon sir right uh, you drag i think the column e there is a uh, column c is missing now ah so because i have i have i have hidden uh, hidden c and d yes. the graph uh, column c and d have been hidden and uh, e is there right. so that i can plot a graph between these two columns now But do okay. Do control Z and it is in it, unhidden. Ah, it will come. I mean, ah. control Z. No, it will not come with the control Z. There is a there is a thing you this problem actually. Ah, uh, this will go, and uh, one minute, one minute, sir. See, so it's coming back. Ah, uh, control Z. This is two has come back. Similarly, I we can have the. other graph also okay other distance also so the things okay. will come back okay thank you yeah. okay so this uh, we can hide and we can show these the uh, columns whenever we need yeah, is, it it. Okay, is it okay okay sir is it okay sir okay ma'am okay uh, there was another question uh -huh. in the chat and that was that uh, ma'am you draw all the three graphs in one but can uh -huh. we also be able to find different equation and slopes from this graph i think you are going to cover this today itself yes, so yes, I, yes I sir so. yeah yeah so my today's lecture i will show you how to find out the slope uh, uh, you can have a graph you can uh, check the best fit line and how you can find out the slope of from that graph okay so i think uh, i will be able to answer your question after the the uh, today's presentation <laughs> So can we start uh, the today's lecture? Yes, can yes, ma'am. Yes, definitely. Okay. okay. Thank you. So can you see my uh, presentation now? Yes. Okay. So today I'm, I'll just talk about how we can handle data and how we can do error analysis in spreadsheet. So if we are uh, performing some experiment, if we have some data, and if we want to take care of, we have to take care of error. Actually, in when we perform experiment, how we can do uh, such type of calculations uh, with our data in spreadsheet? That is the aim of today's talk. So I'll just uh, give you the brief uh, introduction, a brief, or explain some important terms which we use. Then what type of errors we normally have. and then how we can uh, study this propagation of errors then uh, uh, what is the difference between error and uncertainty and how do we write down our result by combining errors in the formula so this will be the main part of my talk so you know that uh, whenever we go to science lab i am taking science or physics lab then what we do we have to do some measurements and uh, then we write down the quantitative values now so for example we say what is the length what is the force acting what is mass some and then we try to calculate all these quantities and uh, we write down our measured value and then plus what is the error we, we can have and that is also added in this value so measurements calculated values value obtained from graphs 
all should be able to tell us how confident we are in the value so there comes a term confidence level also which i am going to explain now some of the terms which i want to uh, clarify in the beginning only these are which we use in when we perform experiment in the lab uh, somebody's mic is on kindly switch it off because i'm having a disturbance thank you so uh, one thing is that uh, is called observed or calculated value whenever we are there in the lab uh, first thing is observed or calculated value second term comes the true value okay for example uh, suppose i want to measure the temperature of uh, boiling water so the true value is we normally take the true value or the values in the book as 100 degree centigrade maybe we get uh, when we try to get the value of uh, that or measured value of the temperature of boiling water maybe we get 99 or 99.2 or something like that okay so then comes a term uh, error and accuracy accuracy means a, me uh, a measure of how close the observed value is to the true value true value we say it's 100 degree centigrade and uh, suppose we are getting 99 point something so we try to see how accurate our value is so we use a formula to get the accuracy and then the error becomes the measured value which we have for example 99.2 i get and the true value is 100 degrees so we try to get the error and there comes a term precision and what is precision it is degree to which repeated measurements under unchanged conditions show the same result it means that uh, i repeat this experiment number of times and then every time i am getting the value around 99.2 or 99.3 something like this but it is around 99.3 okay so that means that is the, that is known as precision now let's see how many types of errors we can have in uh, our measurements number one is the systematic error now the systematic error can be uh, in, due to instruments okay due to imperfect design of the instrument this can be due to environment this can be due to our observational errors for example we make the same error again or again maybe the uh, our uh, value or so the instrument is having some uh, say uh, uh, manufacturing defect or something like that so whenever we take the reading from that instrument we'll have the same type of uh, error occurring in our reading and the second type of error is known as random error these are due to unknown reasons and occur uh, sorry occur while taking measurements now this is important the random errors now this uh, these errors can be reduced but systematic error we cannot but these can be we reduced by taking large number of readings so you remember that when we perform experiments in a lab we try to take large number of readings we are suppose we are asked to take minimum 5 uh, readings or 7 readings so that we can avoid this factor of random error so through repeat measurements we can uh, minimize the error in our readings then we do the statistical analysis that is there so i am going to talk about how we can do this statistical analysis through this spreadsheet that is the aim of this talk so when we do statistical analysis we have these 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 parameters which we use that is mean median variance deviation so you come across these terms mean median variance deviation standard deviation etc etc and for uh, these these things for all these things there is a there is a formula and you can make use of those formula to calculate these values in a spreadsheet so these are other types of error which we have in uh, lab so i'm not going to talk about that but uh, how we can express the our error so the number one type of error is absolute error how we calculate the absolute error so this is there what we do we take large number of readings for example i try to uh, find the length of uh, uh, length of any say any uh, uh, thing any object and uh, i take that length four five times so five readings i have taken i find out the mean of uh, my readings so that becomes a mean normally you try to do this process in the lab and then you uh, calculate the deviation the difference or absolute error we call that is the value of each reading from the mean value so that you try to calculate here so this is representing the mean of our absolute error uh, it means we take the first we take all the readings second step is to take the mean value of all the readings then you take 
the error error means uh, uh, how much different is the your individual reading from the mean value and then you try to get the mean of that error and this is the formula okay the second type of error is relative error in relative error what do you do you take this uh, ratio of the mean absolute error and divide it by the mean value of your quantity so this is relative error if you multiply this relative error by 100% you call it percentage error so when we perform experiment in the lab we take these types of error and you do this calculation in your notebook with the help of your pen or pen note uh, uh, notebook okay now i'm just going to take this exercise in your spreadsheet how we can calculate this error uh, in the spreadsheet uh, satman yeah make some remark yes sir uh, one thing which we must remember when we do experiments is this that true value is never known yeah that is it. so we yeah, take the mean value so uh in fact we whenever we say try to do for example i did an experiment on finding acceleration due to gravity and uh, uh what we do is normally we say okay uh, the value of the mean comes because of that with a known value like 9.8 meters per second square mm. and uh, then we try to calculate the percentage error with respect to that known value mm. and you know that known value may not be the true value true value yes you have to be very careful about this point and keep it in mind that whosoever may have done uh, the experiment that is why they always tend to write down plus minus this so this is very crucial uh, even when they are saying that they are reporting something they know that in that reporting itself an error which is there which they may not have compared with any known value uh, because they are comparing it with the mean itself so these two facts we must keep in mind sometimes we make use of a known value and we say okay this is the true value whereas that may not be the true value exactly so this point i just wanted to make now thank, thank you, you. Uh, it's very important point thank you very much sir for clarifying it so this is the first uh, example i want to share with you suppose we are trying to uh, get the refractive index of water we perform an, an experiment we do this experiment uh, in uh, Uh, optics lab and we try to find the refractive index of water and suppose that i have taken here uh, seven readings seven readings of refractive index okay so you substitute these values here you put these uh, value when you are trying to develop the spreadsheet and then you take the mean value so this column is representing the mean value so for that mean you know that yesterday i have made it uh, clear how to get the mean we select it and we use we uh, uh, the formula the formula used here is average and i have given the range of my column b3 to b10 okay so this gives me the mean value then the second point i uh, uh, talked about was absolute error so how to get the absolute error here are we in the next column we can try to get the absolute error by taking uh, sorry first i have to get the uh, error ap uh, error from the error or the deviation from the mean value so this is represent this column is representing that value here we have the mean value now if you see that here i have put the mean value in dollars it means that i am making use it as a absolute value so every time because i have to subtract the thing from the mean value so i put it with the dollar sign so this becomes the absolute reference in spreadsheet minus b3 means i am taking this value so when i go to this uh, column i find the formula used is this when i go to next column you will find that the first part remains same because it's absolute the next part the address of the column changes it becomes b4 because here we are using relative reference so once you have applied the formula put your cursor here drag it and you get all the values so here you are getting the error the third column i've tried to get the absolute value of the error so here i have said that i have made use of the inbuilt function absolute abs if you type it's inbuilt function in spreadsheet it will give you the absolute value of column c so here i am getting all the absolute values then i try to get the mean absolute error 
So this value is giving me the mean value. If you see that, I've used a formula average and given the range D3 to D10. Okay, so calculate the absolute oh. error. Then you can calculate the relative error. So the relative error is mean value divided. You see that we have taken the delta uh, the D12 address. So D12 is here, lying here. So I've taken the absolute value of this error divided by the mean value. Okay, so the formula is absolute error divided by the mean value. So this gives me this value. And then percentage error I can find out by multiplying it. So in a spreadsheet, you just have to put the formula and you get all the values. And my result will, now if I want to write down the result, I will say it is 1.33 and I can put here 0 0.02 plus minus 0 0.02 is the uh, resultant value of refractive index of water by calculating this uh, value of uh, value or adding the errors in my calculations. So this is the way we calculate absolute, relative, percentage or any formula you apply, you put it the value of that formula and do your calculations. This was the first exercise. If you want to ask anything. Add the error column also some in, uh, in the end just for them to see that it will turn out to be what? Oh, okay. So you mean to uh, you mean that I should write down the yeah, final yeah. value? Yeah, error, error, no, delta mu, delta mu column. Just add, you know, there is a space. You just come here and let them see that what is the value here. No, I didn't understand, sir. What what are you so asking for? Just sum the entries in the uh, C column. Uh, yeah. Okay. And, and then sum it here, yes. In, in, in a column somewhere outside also, you can do that. But some, uh, it, it will okay, it will come out to be zero only. So yeah. I say some sum of C uh, three to C ten. Yeah. Okay, I can select it or I can do it like this. Yes, yes. So this will come out to be zero. So because you know if we take errors with signs, they actually sum up some some to give us a feeling that error is zero. Yes. But errors so don't cancel like that. And uh, we have, that's why we are taking the absolute value. Okay, this okay. is just one yes. point which I made. Yeah, yeah, good, nice, sir. Okay, so, and here, if you want, uh, there is one more thing, we can insert the symbols. That if you go to insert key and uh, go to symbol, and there are lots of symbols over here, lots of symbols. So norm, when we add error or subtract error, we use this symbol. So we can insert this symbol here, 1.33 plus whatever error I have got, that is uh, say 0 0.02. So my refractive index is going to be 1.33 plus minus this value. I can, I can uh, say bold it or I can make it slightly big. So this will be the value. So this thing is coming in a second column. I can put it in. Uh, see, you can always adjust the width of your column by bringing this sign over this line and double clicking it. OK, so this way we write our values. And the calculations are done like this. Is it OK? Can we proceed further? Ma'am, please. Yes? Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, uh, if we drag this uh, uh, cell with the, the symbol plus minus, then whether it uh, appear in the next cell also, then we drag it. Uh, yes. This one? This yes, one? Yes, yes. If you want to drag it? No, sir. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, 2.33 plus 0. It has taken some values, actually. Okay. Okay. Is, my question is when we calculate error, uh, then it will. Uh, okay, ma'am. When, we, cal oh, when yes. we calculate error, sir? Um, and if we drag it, if we drag the cell low, then uh, this symbol will appear on each cell? Then, no. Okay. It will appear, but it, the value will be different. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's coming out. It, it will. It's it's appearing and its values are becoming different, like Mr. Mavan said. You wanted this type, sir. You wanted to ask this only. Actually, I want to um, 
Yes, uh, this is my query. Uh, uh, that uh, in some cases we have to put this plus minus uh, symbol before the error. So if we drag the in the column, it will also appear. I, I think uh, if you. It, it, it's appearing, sir. It's appearing. Yeah. Okay. If you Thank want, you. if you want only plus minus, then write only plus minus and drag. It will come. Yeah. So then you write in one column plus minus, another column numbers. Okay. Okay. Here, if you mean to say, if you add this. Insert this, and uh, you drag this. So you will get the plus minus sign here. Yeah. Tick. Got it. Okay. So this was the exercise. Uh, we have just taken the smaller exercise. Now the propagation of errors. Uh, this you have already started. I mean, students study this thing in uh, class eleventh. That if we have addition uh, of the quantities, the errors will be propagated like this. If we have difference, then we add the errors again. If we have product or multiplication or sorry division, then we uh, propagate take the propagation of errors by these formulae. So these formulae can be used in your spreadsheet to get the values of your quantities uh, or errors in your quantities. So difference in error and uncertainty, I've already uh, explained you very uh, in the very beginning that error is normally we take the difference between measured value and true value, and uncertainty is quantification of the doubt about the measured value. So uh, next is that uh, because all measurements involve some degree of uncertainty arising from different sources. So this means the doubt about the result of the measurement, as Professor Alwali has also made it clear. So this process of evaluating uncertainty is called uncertainty analysis. Now, uh, why we report uncertainty? Why we are emphasizing on uh, finding out the uncertainty in our uh, say, uh, calculation? So this is important because it helps us to assess the quality of data. So, and second thing is to do meaningful comparison of data with other values and uh, verify or refute the theoretical predictions. For example, theoretically, we are getting some value and we find out the uncertainty and we can say that we can say actually verify whether the values are given are true or not. So how do we write the measurement? We write the best estimate, the mean value plus minus uncertainty. So we take large number of values of uh, uh, or readings of our uh, calculation or readings of uh, readings of our experiment, and then plus minus uncertainty to give the measured value of that quantity. So how do we express the uh, uncertainty principle and uh, sorry uncertainty? Uh, we take two things. One is uh, width of the margin of the measurement, and second is the confidence level. Now, if the data is less than 10 values, so this is what I've got from the literature. If the data is less than 10 values, then how do we calculate the uncertainty? So we calculate the range, that is highest value minus the lowest value. Then uncertainty in measurement we calculate divided by two. These are the formulae which, is, which are given in a, a number of manuals. Then uncertainty in the mean is calculated and then you write the measure, measured value here. So we uh, measured value is the mean value plus minus this value. So this is a way uh, to calculate the uncertainty. So I'm taking a second example. Suppose that uh, we have uh, this. Somebody's mic is on. Please switch it off. Suppose I've taken a case that there is a ball falling from certain height. So this was the experiment. And we are trying to take the uh, time taken by this ball falling from height, uh, this much height, five meter or 10 meters. So, uh, and these are the values which we get from our stopwatch, uh, stop clock, uh, whatever we are using. So seven values we have uh, taken. So these are the observations uh, taken. Then we calculate the mean value here. So by now you know how to apply the formula. I'm repeating it so that the things become clear because uh, you calculate the mean here, then you calculate the uncertainty in measurement. That is, I have taken here the highest value of the time minus the lowest value divided by the two. So formula given, and then I calculate the average value of this. I have just applied the value and calculated this uh, value of the time taken by this ball in falling from certain height. 
with this uh, uncertainty in my measurement so if the number is less or the then we can make use of uh, this formula but if we have large number of uh, say readings or uh, data is big then we have to calculate the standard deviation okay so standard deviation means the spread so we how do we calculate the standard deviation in a spreadsheet how we can uh, have a our uh, this uh, bar uh, bars or put bars on our uh, graph that is the next part of the talk okay so spread value we try to calculate or the uh, standard deviation so the thumb rule is that the two third of all readings will fall between plus and minus one standard deviation of the average that is 68% of values are within one standard deviation 95% are two standard deviation and 99.7 are in three standard deviation so these factors actually give us the confidence level so if you see that in uh, uh, number of measurements we write down the confidence level also I mean how much uh, confidence we have in our calculation whether it is it is uh, we are 68% confident or 95 5% confident or 99 point or 7 point or 100% confident in our calculations so how to go for the uncertainty we take the sufficient number of readings if uh, we are performing an experiment then this reading is denoted by xi we take the mean value of the readings next step is mean which we normally do in our uh, lab then we calculate deviation from the mean for all readings and square it and then we apply this formula uh, we, we divide it by variance and uh, and and, and, and Finally, we write down if it is falling in one standard deviation, we write out we are sixty-eight percent value fall within one standard deviation of the mean, and we take the confidence level as this value, mean value plus minus one into uncertainty. If we are ninety-five uh, percent confident, we say mean value plus minus two into uncertainty, and then or three into uncertainty. So this is the formula used. and uh, this is the uh, next exercise i have taken for you the spreadsheet uh, exercise 3 the same thing suppose the data is big you can have this type of a, this is a spreadsheet uh, for your calculations so again there is there was a race and the time taken was this i have taken the five value but i have not taken many values but this formula is applicable if you have a very large number of readings so whenever there is a large number of uh, data uh, number is large we apply statistics so this is there so what we do again the mean value calculate the mean value then we take the deviation here if you see the formula is b3 minus this value we have taken the difference in each value each reading and the mean value so here this is the difference if uh, total difference coming and i have taken the square of deviation from here and then uncertainty is calculated by applying the formula this formula which i have shown you in my presentation i have applied that formula to get this and then i write time uh, taken is this much plus minus this value so we report it like this now 60% of value fall within one standard deviation so i'll take the reading as 15.291 into 0.03 if i am 95% confident i'll say 2 multiplied by 0.03 the reading will come this 3 and like this so this is a way we will report the uh, our uh, uh, say result in by using uh, this spreadsheet okay so let me move uh, ahead and uh, this is the same process we have done and now let me come to the graphical part so in graphical relationship you know we we, we take the readings and we try to find out or we see the relationship by plotting the graph so yesterday we have seen how to plot the graph and we uh, for uh, uh, all the uh, variable and we will, most of the time we try to get the uh, linear graph between the quantity we try to get the uh, linear graph because it is easy to recognize and even small differences from it can be observed if you remember that for a simple pendulum experiment also we took observation between the length and the time period 
and then you know by for applying the formula we square we square the uh, uh, we square the it and get the uh, columns between t square and l and plotted the graph so, so that we can get one one, so, uh, one remark just yes sir right. uh, in fact you know in the earlier discussion which you were doing uh, i think uh, uh, maybe there will be one point which will be very interesting for the uh, students to know particularly and that is that when we take say a small set of readings and when we take large set of readings what difference does it make uh, the large set of readings actually mean that you can always apply statistical method to analyze your results mm. okay now there is one curve which very often people can you know draw if we have a set of readings say 100 readings are there and you will find that uh, these readings which you have taken they may have a kind of a frequency distribution okay so you can always uh, draw the frequency distribution how many number of times a particular reading actually comes and that is typically a bell curve the one curve which you were actually trying to show uh, earlier uh, can you go to that uh, uh, curve where you had marked 68% and 99% uh, I, I, i'll show i'll try to show that also i'll i'll show you in an exercise which we do in uh, classroom here also we yeah. are getting this bell shaped type of a curve and this is my what only, exactly you are talking about my only suggestion uh, was this that this is how we actually decide if we have small set of readings then we will not go to the statistical methods and if we have large yes. set of readings then we try start analyzing things statistically yes. that was the only contention okay yes yes so this was a, actually that experiment uh, where, where we take tossing of coin 100 times we toss the coin and we try to see how many times we get heads up how many times we get tails up and this is a frequency observed which you observe frequency and uh, we calculated the probability of uh, occurrence of zero heads and 10 tails and there the theoretical value was this actually and this was the deviation so here also i can find out the square of deviation and uh, do my uncertainty part you can come back to our discussion there ever you want yes sir okay so uh, linear graphical relationship it can be now this is the this is uh, what the, you were asking in the very beginning of the lecture how we can uh, find out the slope of a of a curve by using this spreadsheet you can easily do it uh, here and uh, the only thing is you take that data set draw that graph best fit trend lines error bars regression and correlation we can always do this things uh, in with the help of this now let me again uh, take an, an example to show you this so exercise 4 yes this is exercise 4 if you remember this was a simple pendulum experiment and we are uh, talking about this experiment again and again in every uh, talk uh, here i have taken the length in a meter and the second is time so when you take a simple pendulum or any pendulum if you take uh, even the compound pendulum we take this length versus uh, time reading only so uh, length versus time values are taken then in the next column t square and by now you are familiar how to get these values here i have just taken the square of this value I applied a formula of square of this and done this okay so uh, this is uh, calculated then the graph is plotted the method of plotting the graph is same you take this two i'll just plot it again for you and go to the scatter plot and take this scatter plot sorry this is between l and t so you can see that uh, curve here and uh, i will just like to take a uh, t square curve which is there so i can i can do it in number of ways i can hide the this column and uh, let me do that i will hide this column i will plot a graph between these two and uh, just see what happens i get this graph here okay lnt 
I have got a scatter product. Right. And now what we can do is to get the slope and all. There is a feature in spreadsheet. You can put the best fit line. Again, go to any point, right click the mouse and go to add trend line. Go to this feature of spreadsheet and here this window will open and you can choose your type of a trend you want. This is linear. So I've chosen here linear. Automatically it will come linear. And here I say that I want to see the intercept. I want to see this. Uh, or, uh, okay. I want to see the intercept. I want to see display equation also and display R square value. All these features are there. So we have got these values here. Okay. I have clicked that equation part also. Uh, sorry, R square has come and display. Uh, just one. So minute. Just, just one minute. Uh, don't yes. Don't set the intercept to zero because it might have an intercept. Let them first. Yeah, it, it has. It has. Uh, it has. So I will not set it. Yes. Don't set. Mm. It has a different value actually. So the, I have. I have. It is not selected. I've just selected these two things now. I've just selected these uh, values. I will just neglect. Okay, and and this is just a repetition. So I have selected these values. You can see these values here. Now this is a equation I've got. Y equivalent to m x plus b. Straight line uh, equation for a straight line. Y is equivalent to m x plus b. If you compare, so it means that uh, I am getting m as four point zero. So this the slope calculated by this graph is 4.028 and this side is representing the intercept which is 0 0.013. If you put this slope in your formula which was uh, uh, g equal to 4 pi square l by t square you can calculate the value of acceleration due to gravity also. Let me delete this and show you this. Is it okay? Is it uh, is it clear how to get the uh, slow or linear graphic curve? You can make use of best fit line or trend line to give you the straight line equation from where you can calculate the slip, uh, the slope and the intercept. Yes, ma'am. Uh, is there any other way to calculate the slope from the data itself without plotting the graph? That you can, uh, I mean, uh, slow we can calc without plotting the graph. Uh, you mean to say the formula? Yeah. Uh, there is one uh, slope uh, in the built in function. In built in function, there's a the, okay. One minute. Yes, mm. there is a function you said. So let I haven't I haven't explored it. Sorry, but uh, oh. let me see that insert. Uh, uh, first, first highlight yeah. Excel Y and then do slow. Uh, highlight the Excel file. X and Y, X values and Y values. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. So I'm highlighting the X values and and the Y values. And then ma'am slope. No, it's not uh, highlighted properly. One minute, huh? Then I'll let me then hide this one. Okay, now I can highlight it properly, easily. Then uh, equal slope. Okay, so there is a function slope. Then I have to give the range. Uh. 
known y is a known x acha so you don't have to highlight first write equal slope then highlight y comma x no uh, delete of the highlight first ah yeah uh, now you write equal slope and then uh, write y values and x values mm -hmm. okay open bracket uh, and y value oh, okay so we can take any value say 1. Uh, no, no. all 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 y all all oh all range okay 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 so y that's this colon and colon again colon uh, comma sorry comma comma oh, yeah it should be comma and then i will i think there is some value x no let me put it here zero and then equal to slope and then y value no i got it comma y value then comma and then x values no 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 y range y value full range full range i have taken done uh, yeah close bracket ah uh, close bracket and then enter yeah. enter 3.6 it's giving 3 it is giving 3.61694 intercept yeah. also so it's it. Okay. okay, so it's it's almost uh, it, it's almost same, same here. Here yeah. also getting yeah. yeah, very good. Thank you, thank, yeah. you, thank you, thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Sunish. Very, very useful. Oh, welcome. Thank you, Sunish. Very, very useful. Yeah. So similarly for very intercept also, ma'am, we will uh, insert the function intercept. Good. But so I have also I have also done that thing. New function. Sapna. Yes, sir. Can you do one thing more? Here, you know yes, what sir. we have found is. The slope of the line of the complete data. Yes, the yes. A line which is not like this, but this is a parabola, right? And in that case, you know, can I find slope at different different points by this method? That means, out of the given data, I select only one x and y here, put it there, and see whether that answer comes or not. Okay, so I'm just trying to you know think about. A way of finding slope and each and every point. Ah, uh, so you mean to say slope of any any uh, two cells? Right? Yeah. So I'll say yeah. so, uh, I take this two point zero two value. No, no, not value. Just take the values from uh, the table itself. Ah, uh, I'm X taking that value. I'm. I mean, you mean to say this right value? Address, yeah. Right address. C seven. Uh, and yeah. So this all is color. Is it color or com? C color and hey, sorry comma comma it should be comma yes ah uh, range के लिए and A seven yeah let let's see what it gives us so is then, it giving no no this will give you y by x which is not correct it should be delta y by delta x oh take okay. two values ah then it will be correct it will yes, be two yes. values maybe, divided by maybe, maybe, two values Maybe what you can do is you can take not just value but one value above it and one value below it, and then maybe you will be able to get you take three values. Okay. Then you will get. And you will three, get. Three, 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 three. Three. Try to see that. So I should write slope uh, here. I should give the the range. Yeah, three three select values. Three, select three numbers. Yeah. Consider three numbers. Three rows. Ah. Wait a minute. Control Z. 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 Control Z.
in this case it will not change because it is coming out to you no sir it will not give you the exact slope because that is the best fit line this you are doing only three points which is not the best fit line the slopes will not match uh, this is okay. 4 point that was 3.616 mm. i'll suggest no, no, ma'am uh, i just I think the first value has been changed in this data that is uh, at a4 now it is point 2 uh, earlier it was it was zero uh, it was so zero. we we can we can always check it now yeah. maybe we'll... if you type uh, change point Two by zero. I think it will. Be uh, but sir, I okay. Mm -hmm. No, you mean to uh, you want me to change it? Hey. No, it's okay. Okay, okay. We don't consider this point in this uh, in calculating the. Uh, in this calculation, we have not considered it. Okay, okay. Uh, what I am suggesting you, one can do one small, you know, exercise. Ah. Uh, and that is that you take such three three, uh, you know, uh, sets. you at uh, various points and take the mean of that and try to see see whether that now comes out to be the uh, slope which you got with the best fit line or not one small exercise an extension of that hmm this can be done actually you can try that i mean you know you need to explore the things galat ye hoga hone wala hai isme kuch zyada nahi hone wala and i think this exercise will be very useful if you try to do it for uh, not uh, just straight line but for a curved graph where the slope change is actually um let me take this again so if you plot a graph between this l and t ha huh. so there you will get this type of a graph Yeah. Okay. And you now draw a best fit line in this case also. Draw a best fit yeah. line. We will not touch all the points. Yes. So and let's see the things also slope. Yeah. So see now if you uh, see there are some points which are above it and there are some points which are below it. Below it is. Yes. And there are large number of points which are above it. Huh. So this best fit line is not good enough because best fit line, if it is a linear curve, will have. as many number of points above and as many number of points below that normally it is like that but now in this case you know if you wish to find a slope at particular value i was talking about in what we got you take the adjacent value after all you are finding uh, that that way only of doing the things so you will get slope at different different points should we try it or leave it for the students hey, leave it as an exercise for people student okay yeah. okay sir but it was a wonderful discussion i would say it was a good discussion uh, yeah yeah very nice and we i have also learned new things actually great okay so let me go to the next part which i want to cover that is how to put error bars on graphs so error bars which are graphical representation of the variability of data and used on graphs to indicate the error so whatever error you calculate you can show it in your graph also so that is the next exercise so let me take that exercise with you and maybe we'll learn something new in that also so uh, this is actually i'll just put this graph here and this is that i have suppose four a set of uh, four sets of data uh, like suppose tossing of coin i felt like trial 1 trial 2 trial 3 try 4 and this data i have got so how to how to get, how to put this type of these are called the error bars and uh, these error bars can be in different uh, forms we can add this in form of standard deviation standard error or uh, uh, or confidence the uh, uh, part we can add it i'll show you how to add these error bars in your graph so uh, first thing is take the mean value of your uh, observation or readings which you are getting so trial 1 i have taken the mean value here for trial 1 and for trial 2 this is the mean value trial 3 th these are the mean values then for the mean values you just take the graph so plot the graph go to insert and uh, here i have taken this column if you see that this these columns have come 
here so the same column these are the range you can change the uh, range of x axis or y axis whatever want you want so i'll just delete this series part and this is my uh, four uh, mean values this is representing 55.57 this is representing 77 this is 51.8 and 57 then for the next step what i do for to add the errors we have to go to the select data select data and here for the select data you will oh one minute you will sorry uh, i think go to select data here yeah. one minute um and uh, error bar comes wait 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 layout layout me yeah go to layout and then there are there, there is a yeah, yeah there is a error bar ka wo fine go to error bars layout me error bars hain error bars there are options error bars with standard error error bars with percentage error bar with standard deviation so uh, explain me kya hai display error bars for the selected chart series with one standard deviation so i have calculated the standard deviation also here the with the formula and uh, i choose this option so i get these bars here now i have to set the values for these bar because i have calculated standard deviation here okay so now i go to this format error bars and here i say customize it and specify the values okay so positive error bar so if you want that error bar well, how much it should be above or how much it should be down so positive error bars i choose this range my four values and uh, for uh, negative error bar also i choose these values which i have calculated for my in my standard deviation okay and uh, this it and i get these error bars here so i've got these error bar here with the standard deviation i have calculated for each part 557 here for this video, uh, set of reading it is standard deviation is 7 so it's giving me this 7 value this is giving me 14.6 value this is 6.3 and so you can show these error bars in your uh graph also okay and uh, that's it i mean uh, any questions regarding this madam yes Hanji. is there any uh, function for calculating standard deviation ha ah, yes sir that is there yahi yahi column yahan se i can calculate it it's there you again you will just start with this and just type standard standard deviation lots of lots of option will come we'll just take standard deviation here. so this is going to give me standard deviation and then you say you uh, number 1 number 2 and like this so i can give the range that is uh, b2 or sorry b3 to b8 and press enter i get this value i will get i i should select it here will get here standard deviation if i'll say standard deviation and uh, range is c3 to c8 so i have selected the range and press enter will get this 14 point this sir i'm getting the standard deviation 14.58 let's take it 14.6 here thank you is it okay sir uh, from uh, students point of view it is always a good exercise that we ask them to calculate these in a table and not uh, you know go ahead with the calculation of the standard deviation by the standard statistical uh, you know uh, function which is available in excel because once they do it you know in table form it it uh, brings transparency before us about the procedure also it is very essential in learning uh, teaching environment itself but yes once you have calculated it by that method and you can always try to check 
whether our function is giving the same answer or not. So uh, there was one, you know, question which was coming uh, in the discussion also, uh, and that was uh, uh, whether we will have some errors when we try to do uh, some calculations on the spreadsheet also. Yes, uh, computer also introduces certain errors. For example, when Sapna took seven uh, as the answer or 14 point up to only two decimal places, the computer in the background, you know, chopped off the rest of the number which we were getting with the standard function itself. So these are the points which we should really keep in mind to appreciate what is happening at the background. And uh, random errors actually very often pop in when we do calculations on the computer itself. Yeah, that was my remark, Sapna. Yeah, very nice, sir. Thank you very much. So, uh, so I, th th these are just two exercises as your homework, students. Uh, you take a set of reading, plot the graph in spreadsheet, draw the trend line, write down the equation of the best fit trend line to your data, slope of the, find out the slope of the trend line, y-intercept of the trend line, what we have discussed today, check whether the fit of the line to the data is good or bad, and why. So one exercise you can do this, and the uh, sorry. Uh, then next uh, homework can be you take a, again a set of reading, plot the graph in spreadsheet, and put the error bars in your graph. Okay, so I have taken a simple pendulum case, and that's it. So thank you very much. This was all about I wanted to discuss with you today. And uh, now I just hand over the uh, things to uh, Alu Alia, sir, to continue with his uh, yesterday's uh, part of the lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. that uh, 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 sir, sir, if there are any question, if, if uh, we can take those questions later on after your talk. No, I am saying that are you not going to do that uh, of fine experiment. Pardon, sir, which experiment? Uh, talking of the coin. Uh, uh, you want me to discuss it with... No, I can do that also, sir. Uh, just for a minute, you know, why I would like that uh, to be done. Let me just okay. tell, me, tell you my motivation, why we should try to do that. Should I tell you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. This is an experiment which students can do at home on their own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. What they need to do is they need to collect only 100 coins of the same denomination. Take 5 rupees, take 1 rupees, take 1 rupees, take 1 rupees. And what they have to do is they have to keep a cardboard sheet on the bed and go to bed and go to bed and go to bed. They will fall. Someone will fall, someone will fall. Do 100 such tries and count heads and tails for each one. So you will generate data. You will generate data in the copy of it. And the kind of tables which you are actually making here, those tables will come. And then they can do the calculations which you can discuss with them. Let us encourage them to do this experiment. Please, Sapna, discuss. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Actually, this is the data I have plotted here. I have got it from my student. During this lockdown period, they performed this experiment at their home only. So unhone, uh, they have given me this data or un upload kiya Google Classroom. Mein, so I have taken that data for this uh, presentation. So I'm using their data, actually, my students' data. Very good. And the uh, graph, I, of course, I plotted myself. Very good. I mean, you made them do some experiment at home. That's it. Yeah. So they can do. Yes, sir. We can put it in Google Classroom, actually, this assignment. And this will cover lots of things. This uh, this uh, experiment is going to cover lots of things, actually. They can talk about deviation. They can talk about uh, the... Uh, they can even put the error bars in this also. Uh, kindly explain what have you done. Number of heads is zero. Number of tails is 10. That means all the things. But if you See, actually uh, put it in random, I think the probability will be half. It won't be like this. So I'm having some doubt as to what exactly they have done. No, no. I'll just I'll just tell you, ma'am. Uh, lots of students do it every time, and we uh, don't we don't always get 150 percent. You see, the thing is that they have taken 10 coins. Uh, suppose hmm. rupee one uh, rupee one coin, 10 coins, and uh, hmm. they will throw these 10 coins and see how many time how many heads and how many tails are there. 
so that is first uh, trial uh, suppose in first trial uh, out of 10 coins two are showing heads up and eight are showing tails up okay this is my first observation next time also again i will throw 100 uh, uh, sorry 10 coins and i'll see how many heads are there how many tails so a big observation table is going to come okay so i will have i will have i can have these type of a combination maybe out of 10 i'll just get zero heads and 10 tails all tails are coming all 10 coins are with tails i can get this type of a combination that one coin is giving heads up nine are showing tails up two are showing heads up eight are showing tails up so these are the combination out of 10 i can have 0 1 2 3 heads up or similarly if i'll have zero head i'll have 10 tails if i'll have one head i'll get nine tails two heads eight tails these these are the combinations okay so out of 100 i see how many types i get this type of a combination zero 10 combination so uh, they didn't get any my, my this, this particular student didn't get any zero 10 combination so frequency was zero but uh, one nine combination again she didn't get it so put it zero and uh, two eight combination she got it five times so we put it here for frequency is five times 3 7 10 day. so maximum frequency if you notice it is at 6 4 22 mm -hmm. times she got six heads and four tails and if you see that if you combine all this thing it will give you 100 so sum is 100 so 100 times she has performed this uh, exercise okay so uh, if you plot this graph so we are going to get this bell type of a graph so observe frequency is this this is r factorial we have calculated this is n minus r factorial means the tail tails part the formula used for probability we applied that is a uh, total number of your uh, coin n factorial divided by a uh, heads up factorial and tails up factorial multiplied by 1 uh, upon 2 raised to power n so this is probability uh, which we are getting the probability of getting 0 10 is in my case 0 theoretically we are expecting it yes if i apply the, the formula the theoretical probability is 0.09 so this the column is showing me the deviation from my experimental and theoretical value so this is the next uh, case the uh, next uh, case one head and nine tails the probability i am getting is 0.0098 and theoretical probability is 0.976 so this is the deviation and uh, maximum probability i am getting here somewhere this one 22 cases this 2.2 uh, 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 or 0.2461 like this and uh, and and and, and here i am getting it at 24 theoretical expected frequency and theoretical probability so, so this was the probability is 50% approximately yes. Yes, with hundred coins, maximum probability is fifty percent. Oh, fine. Acha. Okay, I got it. I got it. Yeah, got it. And what is the formula you are using for probability? Just tell uh, me. Yeah, this one. It's, uh, it's n factorial, n factorial divided mm -hmm. by r factorial, mm -hmm. and in denominator n minus r factorial. That is a, a heads up factorial and tails up factorial. Okay. And uh, one more, one more thing is there. Uh, uh, multiplied by one upon two raised to power n, small n. That is uh, your uh, number of number of points. points. Yes, number of points. So this is going to become ten factorial divided by uh, these values, zero factorial or ten factorial, and two raised to power ten. So this is there. If you look at this formula, it's a uh, here I have calculated the n factorial value. This column. So in my formula, this is uh, the absolute one I'm taking, e7 and f7. That is this uh, factorial part, this part, and two raised to power n. Ten. Right, ma'am? Hmm. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. So this can be an exercise for the students, as I uh, have told us. This experiment, and then lots of things can be done on spreadsheet with this experiment. Uh, Sapna, may I make some yes, further suggestions? Sapna, may I make some further suggestions? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But is my mic is still on, so I'm finding little hard to listen. Okay. Uh, are you able to listen now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I can you know suggest one experiment which directly links up with you know a very good uh, uh, exercise which we do in. 
physics, and that is radioactive decay simulation. You can take yeah. the coins and treat that. If head comes, it uh, decays, and if tail comes, it doesn't decay. So you throw say five hundred coins. and then try to see how many have decayed and how many are left and then you can generate the data also this is also an experiment which can be done at home very conveniently uh-huh. and you can get the exponential decay curve also with the help of that and on top of that you can do very many you know calculations half life nikal lo uh, decay constant nikal lo all those things can be done with the help of that so that is also an exercise which can be done and data can be analyzed on what on uh, the excel sheet mm. so that is one uh, possibility which we can really think of doing okay uh, so i have uh, hearing the thing sir and i have handed over the mic to you okay all right <laughs> thank you hello Yes, please. Sorry, sorry, sir. Uh, I ha- have to uh, attend an important phone from my college, so I just uh, uh, not not attending this uh, uh, conversation. Uh, I have also signed uh, my colleague Harpreet Ma'am, but uh, I think uh, she is not here. So I think it's over. No. Sir has to talk to some uh, about that. Uh, no, sir, uh, Doctor Alubaliya will start his his lecture after Doctor. Okay. Has completed his lecture. Please. May I may I begin? May I begin? I'll yes, begin a few things yes. and then stop. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You. One, one thing is the recapitulation of what we did yesterday, and I'll not show you that on the spreadsheet because my spreadsheet is already on. We forgot, na. इस बात को मैं रिपीट कर रहा हूं अगर आपको विजुअल बेसिक एप्लीकेशन यूज करनी है तो सबसे पहले आपको क्या करना होता है एनीबडी स्टूडेंट्स एनीबडी एनी स्टूडेंट्स प्लीज सब प्लीज रिपीट द क्वेश्चन आई एम रिपीटिंग द क्वेश्चन आई एम सेइंग दैट इफ यू हैव टू डू वीबीए इन द एक्सेल स्प्रेडशीट then uh, first thing which you have to do is what otherwise you will not be able to do that i am asking a very simple question we have to turn on uh, the picture i was saying something please repeat it we have to turn on the developer option so first thing which we have to do is turn on the developer option aur wo hum kaise karte hain ab dekho kya ho raha hai hum na ye 1997 se excel spreadsheet istemal kar rahe hain और इतनी इवोल्यूशन हुई है स्प्रेडशीट की कुछ नए फंक्शंस और नई चीजें आई हैं कि कई बार हम भी भूल जाते हैं तो जैसे ये जो ऑप्शंस वाला पार्ट था ना कभी ये होता था ऊपर बैठा हुआ जिसमें हम व्यू कर लेते थे टूल बॉर पे चीजें अब इन्होंने वो ऑप्शंस में डाल दिया हुआ है व्यू करने वाली चीजें तो यू हैव टू गो टू ऑप्शन इन द लेटेस्ट वर्जन ऑफ एक्सेल यू हैव टू गो टू ऑप्शन एंड क्लिक इट ऑन वट इज विजिबल टू यू once it is there the second thing which we have to remember is this that whenever you are going to have any uh vba module added to your spreadsheet you must save your spreadsheet with a different extension m should come in the end xlsm wo m hame batata hai ki jo aap ab vba mein kaam karoge wo save ho jayega अगर वो नहीं आप डालोगे तो आपने जो भी काम किया होगा सेव करके बाहर निकलने की कोशिश करोगे तो दैट विल गेट लॉस्ट दिस इज द सेकंड पार्ट व्हिच यू हैव टू रियली रिमेंबर राइट द थर्ड थिंग व्हिच वाज देयर वाज द फॉलोइंग एंड दैट वाज दैट आप फंक्शंस अपने यूजर डिफाइंड फंक्शंस कर सकते हो कुछ फंक्शन आपके पास पहले से बने पड़े हुए हैं आपके एक्सेल वाले बना देते हैं पर अगर आप जब समझते हो कि नहीं मेरी एक्टिविटी के लिए दिस इज ए फंक्शन विच आई एम यूजिंग अगेन एंड अगेन यू कैन डिफाइन ए यूजर डिफाइंड फंक्शन वो फंक्शन से स्टार्ट होता है ऊपर हम लिखते ही हैं फंक्शन और अगर आप सब रूटीन डालना चाहते हो तो आप सब रूटीन भी डाल सकते हो और दोनों में थोड़ा सा बड़ा माइन्यूट जैसा फर्क है 
आप सब रूटीन की तरह जो चीजें करते हो उसमें आप फॉरन एक्स प्रूफ वगैरह भी इस्तेमाल कर लेते हो देर एज मे बी इन ए फंक्शन यू कैन नॉट एन फंक्शन ऑलवेज रिटर्न ए वैल्यू ए सब रूटीन मे नॉट रिटर्न ए वैल्यू ऑल्सो दिस इज अनदर फाइनर पॉइंट विच वी हैव टू कीप इन माइंड वाइल डीलिंग विद दीज मॉड्यूल्स तो जब भी आप कभी जाओगे लेट मी गो टू देशन पार्ट लेट मी सी इफ आई कैन ओपन समथिंग टू शो यू let me come to uh i hope you are able to see uh this here uh can you see the screen now please tell me yes sir yes, okay so agar aap yahan pe dekhoge ab main yahan pe side bar pe ja raha hu ye jaise projectile motion wala hai isme dot xlsm likha hua hai mere is computer timeline wala jo maine show kiya tha usme dot xls likha hua hai maine ये एक मोलिकुलर वेलोसिटी वाला है इसमें मैंने डॉट एक्स एल एस एम लिखा हुआ है क्योंकि इसमें मैंने ये चीजें करी हुई नाउ लेट मी ट्राई टू ओपन वन अब देखिए एक बहुत ही डराने वाला ना एक मैसेज स्क्रीन पे आया है अगर ये मैसेज को आप नहीं ध्यान से एनेबल करोगे तो आपका जो स्प्रेडशीट uh, है वो जो है वो ओपन होएगा वो चलेगा नहीं बट ये ना बड़े अजीब जैसे तरीके से मैसेज आता है तो so, मुझे इस बात का थोड़ा सा ध्यान रखना पड़ता है कि ये मैसेज जो है इस पर मुझे एनेबल करनी है मैक्रोस तो द मोमेंट आई एनेबल दीज मैक्रोस आई फाइंड दैट थिंग्स आर नाउ विजिबल टू मी मेरा ये ओपन होगी इट्स अ वेरी सिंपल एक्सरसाइज इट इज ए ट्राइंगल टेस्टर एक्चुअली इसमें हम क्या कर रहे हैं समबडी गिव अस थ्री वैल्यूज ए बी एंड सी ट्राइंगल टाइप फाइंड करनी है मुझे ओके एंड then you can you know uh, try to have three cases if b is greater than a if c is greater than a if c is greater than b and then we try to you know find out what is there and then we try to ask ourselves is a greater than b plus c then and then else if statements also come into it and we are able to see jaise ye 3 5 4 wala part hai to isme kya ho raha hai this is right angle triangle we already know it Six five four. All triangle sides are unequal. It is a scalene triangle. Now what we have done here, uh, what we uh, asked was, ये जो हमने ये नाम दे रखा है function का tri type A B C. इसको मैंने ना call करा हुआ है बस equal to नाम लिखा और automatically इस function में जो कुछ possibilities होनी थी वो हुई और इसने मुझे एक value return कर दी which is called से राइट एंगल ट्राइंगल और से स्केल एंड ट्राइंगल और से आइसोस्टिस ट्राइंगल और से इक्विलेट्रल ट्राइंगल नाउ इफ यू ट्राई टू सी माई डेवलपर इज ऑन हेयर कैन यू सी इट ये डेवलपर मैंने ऑन करा है और आई कैन ऑलवेज गो टू विजुअल बेसिक ये देखो आप मेरे पास विजुअल बेसिक में Uh, जो डिफरेंट डिफरेंट मॉड्यूल्स पड़े होते हैं वो मेरे पास यहाँ अवेलेबल हैं। डिफरेंट डिफरेंट शीट्स हैं एक्चुअली इसमें uh, वो मैं आप वो सारी नहीं डिस्कस कर रहा हूँ आई एम ओनली डिस्कसिंग फ्यू शीट्स ओनली विद यू सो देर आर सर्टेन यू नो मॉड्यूल्स विच आर सिटिंग हेयर एंड वी कैन ऑलवेज थिंक ऑफ ऑल दो मॉड्यूल्स एंड हाउ दे आर एक्चुअली फंक्शनिंग सो लेट मी जस्ट गो बैक इन एक्सेल शीट इट सेल्फ Now come here. You will see that this is sheet one only, which I have done. If I go to a different sheet, then I will use the quadratic equation solver. The solver is an add-in in the uh, uh, spreadsheets. So one equation is: you give coefficients, you give the number of roots, and uh, then it will try to give you uh, those values. If two roots are there, it will give you the values of the roots according to. the things so what i want to tell you is this only that the possibility of using uh visual basic applications is very very much what you call uh uh, uh open aur iske liye aapko thoda jaisa 
एज मैम यस्टरडे सेड कि हमको बेसिक के थोड़ी कमांड्स के बारे में भी पता होना चाहिए अगर वो कमांड्स मुझे मालूम नहीं है तो फिर गड़बड़ हो जाएगी और वो गड़बड़ हम नहीं होना चाहते हैं तो हमारे पास हमने जो एक इसमें मॉड्यूल बना रखा हुआ है ये वाला मॉड्यूल जो है हमारे पास जिसको हम यूज कर रहे हैं डिफरेंट डिफरेंट बेसिस आई होप यू कैन सी दैट हाउ वी आर यूजिंग दी मॉड्यूल एंड वो डालने के बाद हमारे पास कहाँ कहाँ वैल्यूज आ रही है वो हमने यहाँ पे निकालने की रूट काउंट फॉर एग्जाम्पल सी सिक्स में हाउ मेनी नंबर ऑफ रूट आर देयर वो यहाँ पे लिखा पड़ा हुआ है and then we have this uh, uh, the outputs which are coming so all those things can be actually put here so basically hame thoda jaisa basic ki application aani chahiye but aisa nahi hai aap apni tarah se bhi wo cheeze kar sakte ho let me go to one small uh, demonstration of that mere paas na ये फॉर्मूले हैं आई होप यू रिमेम्बर दैट दीज आर द फॉर्मूली विच वी यूज इन कनेटिक थ्योरी ऑफ गैसेज डू यू रिमेम्बर दिस वी प्रोबेबल वी मीन एंड वी आर एम एस वैल्यूज दीज आर द फॉर्मूली विच वी विश टू एक्चुअली कैलकुलेट तो मेरे पास चार गैसेस थी उन चार गैसेस का डाटा था मेरे पास और एक पर्टिकुलर टेम्परेचर पे मैं तीनों वैल्यूज कैलकुलेट करना चाहता था तो मैं क्या कर सकता था डायरेक्टली ये फॉर्मूला भी बना के इक्वल टू करके लिख सकता था है ना जैसे मैंने यहाँ पे किया रूट ऑफ दिस 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 एंड देन आई हैव कैलकुलेटेड बट वेन आई गो हेयर फॉर एग्जाम्पल वट आई हैव डन इज आई हैव क्रिएटेड दिस फंक्शन इन द डेलपर एंड देन आई एम पुटिंग इट हेयर अब जैसे मुझे मैं एक एग्जाम्पल ले लेता हूं सपोज यू विश टू फाइंड डिस्टेंस ट्रेवल्ड एज पर यू टी प्लस हाफ एटी स्केयर तो यू हैव यू एंड फॉर डिफरेंट डिफरेंट टाइम यू नो यू हैव टू फाइंड आउट एस तो आप क्या करोगे वो जो फॉर्मूला इक्वल टू करके आप लिखते हो उसकी बजाय एक आपने मॉड्यूल इंसर्ट करा उस मॉड्यूल में एक फंक्शन डिफाइन करा और वो फंक्शन यहाँ पे आकर के आपने यूज कर लिया जैसे जैसे सपना यूज कर रही थी स्टैंडर्ड एविएशन वाला फंक्शन बट दैट वाज ए बिल्ट इन फंक्शन वेयर एज दिस फंक्शन इज यूजर डिफाइंड फंक्शन तो हम ना इस पर्टिकुलर कोर्स में हम ज्यादा डिटेल में तो नहीं जा सकते बट आई थिंक आई हैव ट्राइड कि आपको इससे टच करवा दिया जाए कि ये कैसे चीजें काम करती हैं और कैसे हमारे को ये चीजें यूज uh, करने में भी मदद करती हैं so that was my uh, particular you know effort which i wanted to really talk about let me see if uh, i can show you another very interesting uh, uh, possibility ye graph hai magar isme maine koi bhi uh, user defined function istemal nahi kara let me tell you the situation which we can use excel for these kinds of uh, activities जब मैं न्यूमेरिकल मेथड पढ़ाता हूँ ना बच्चों को तो कोई भी न्यूमेरिकल मेथड आप उठाओ उसमें क्या पूछा जाता है गिव मी द इनिशियल गैस इन विच पॉसिबली द रूट इज लाइंग सो हाउ डू आई नो इनिशियल गैस वो मुझे पता करना होता है तो मैंने क्या किया मुझे एक इक्वेशन थी एक्स स्क्र माइनस वन गिवन तो वट आई डिड वॉज फॉर गिवन वैल्यूज ऑफ एक्स आई कैलकुलेटेड द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स स्क्र माइनस वन एंड प्लॉटेड ए ग्राफ एन एनी बडी टेल मी Uh, what is the meaning of root of a function anybody please come on come forward and tell me uh, am i audible yes sir yeah so can anybody tell me actually root of a function is let me tell you Yes, somebody is uh, telling me. Yes, the value which satisfies the equation. So when he said satisfied, I will speak technically. A value which, when put in the function, gives me answer equal to zero. Prithviraj, am I right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So now give look at this graph. मेरे पास ये graph क्या है? X axis को cut कर रहा है. 
और x एक्सिस पे जहां वो कट कर रहा है वैल्यू ऑफ द फंक्शन इज इक्वल टू जीरो एंड व्हाट इज दिस गिविंग मी x इज इक्वल टू प्लस वन एंड x इज इक्वल टू माइनस वन एज द रूट राइट बट मैं एक और चीज जो आपको बताना चाहता हूं वो क्या है मैंने क्या किया यहां पे मैंने ये जो टेबल बना इसमें मैंने क्या किया है कंडीशनल फॉर्मेटिंग की कंडीशनल फॉर्मेटिंग में क्या होता है ये यह यहां पे लिंक है यहां पे ये कंडीशनल फॉर्मेटिंग का लिंक है मेरे पास इससे क्या होता है आपको विजुअली एकदम पता लग जाता है अच्छा हाँ इस, इस वैल्यू के आसपास जो है मेरी वैल्यूज जो है वो आ, देंगी आंसर इक्वल टू जीरो राइट अब देखो आप ये वाली वैल्यूज जो मेरे पास थी जिनको मैं येलो से शो कर रहा हूँ आई होप इट इज विजिबल एज येलो ऑल्सो ऑन द स्क्रीन ऑफ योर एप और योर पर्सनल कंप्यूटर और लैपटॉप ये पॉजिटिव वैल्यूज है आप देख रहे हो सडनली ये वैल्यूज ने साइन चेंज करा और साइन चेंज का मतलब क्या था आई हैव क्रॉस ए रूट तो आई नो दैट बिटवीन माइनस वन पॉइंट वन एंड माइनस जीरो पॉइंट नाइन माई रूट लाइज ओके तो मुझे वहां पे जब न्यूमेरिकल मेथड में ये चीजें करनी होती है तो मुझे कहा जाता है ग्राफिकल वे में देख लो वो इंटरवल कहां है जहां पे रूट लाई करता है राइट नाउ लेट एस ट्राई टू सी इट डाउन लेट मी ट्राई टू गो डाउन समवेयर आपने देखा ये वैल्यू नेगेटिव थी और फिर ये पॉजिटिव में टर्न कर गई लेट एस ट्राई टू गो टू द ग्राफ इट ये पॉजिटिव देन इट बिकेम नेगेटिव एंड देन इट अगेन बिकेम पॉजिटिव तो इट क्रॉस द एक्स एक्स इज द टू पॉइंट वट एव आई गॉट आई हैव गॉट टू वैल्यूज ऑफ द रूट तो ये एक बड़ी इंटरेस्टिंग यू नो छोटी छोटी एक्सरसाइजेज कभी आपको लगता है मुझे एक्सप्लोर करना है मुझे तो बोल रहा है वो मैंने जब प्रोग्राम रन करना है इनिशियल मुझे आ, कुछ गेस्ट बताओ वो इंटरवल बताओ जिसमें बाइसेक्शन मेथड में फॉर एग्जांपल यू नीड टू टेल द इंटरवल इन विच द रूट लाइज और अगर वो आपके पास इंटरवल नहीं होगा जिसमें रूट नहीं लाई करता है तो वो एक लूप में चलता रहेगा वो कंडीशन सेटिस्फाई कभी होएगी नहीं and you will feel frustrated कि क्या हो रहा है मैं क्या करूं एग्जैक्ट इंटरवल कैसे फाइंड करूं एंड दिस इज अवे बाई विच यू कैन ट्राई टू डू दिस अनदर थिंग विच आई वॉन्ट टू टेल यू हमने कई चीजें यहां पर बोल जा रहे हैं कर रहे हैं कभी आपको डाउट हो कि ये क्या था गो ऑन द गूगल फॉर एग्जाम्पल आज स्लोप का डिस्कशन हुआ ट्राई टू राइट डाउन स्लोप एक्सेल फंक्शन और उसके ऊपर आपके पास पूरी डिटेल्ड इंफॉर्मेशन आ जाएगी सो एक्सप्लोर इट किसी के पास जाके पूछने की जरूरत भी नहीं है और धीरे धीरे जब हम ग्रुप में काम करते हैं ना तो ये चीजें फिर हमको हम सीख भी जाते हैं एक दूसरे से भी पता लग जाता है और गूगल बाबा तो ग्रेट है ही है उन पे जाके आप बहुत कुछ सीख भी सकते हो और लर्न भी कर सकते आई होप यू हैव अंडरस्टूड वट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से एंड यू विल अप्रिशिएट दिस ऑल्सो दैट वट हैज बीन सुजेस्टेड टू यू आई होप थोड़ा जैसा जो मैंने समय आपसे चुराया है उसमें जो मुझे बताना था वो मैंने बता दिया uh, एक बार फिर मैं आपको बता दू मैंने ये चीजें ना बहुत पहले करी हुई है कई बार मैं भूल भाल जाता हूँ चीजें बीच में तो रिकॉल करने बट रिकॉल हो जाती है ऐसा नहीं है मैंने पंद्रह साल के बाद रिकॉल कर ली चीजें कहाँ है कैसे करेंगे हम इसको अगर आप एक महीना हैबिट बना लोगे हर रोज एक स्प्रेडशीट डेवलप करने की आपके लोग समझने लग जाएंगे वो हेयर इज एन एक्सपर्ट टू होम वी शुड गो एंड आस्क एंड टेल कि स्प्रेडशीट कैसे काम करती है दैट इज आई एम सुजेस्टिंग क्लासरूम में आपके पास एक प्लेटफॉर्म है उस प्लेटफॉर्म पे जाके रोज एक स्प्रेडशीट डेवलप करके देख लो आप फिजिक्स के स्टूडेंट हो फिजिक्स की कोई प्रॉब्लम उठा के वो स्प्रेडशीट बनाने की कोशिश कर लो आई थिंक आपको नेक्स्ट दो जो सेशन आने वाले हैं दे आर गोइंग टू बी ग्रेट सेशन लेट मी टेल यू आई नो मैम शर्मिष्ठा फॉर हाउ मेनी इयर्स मैम वी नो ईच अदर योर माइक इज ऑफ ऑलमोस्ट फ्रॉम 2000 आई थिंक 2000 टू थाउजेंड हमने बीस इक्कीस साल से एक दूसरे को जानते हैं एंड शी इज ए वेरी डेडिकेटेड टीचर इंस्पिरेशनल टीचर and uh, i think she believes in you know interacting with students she loves her students and uh, i have been seeing that how she innovates about the things that's the beauty of it 
and uh, hats off to ma'am that uh, she is very very active and we are going to have two very great sessions tomorrow one uh, on finding the value of pi choti jaisi cheez hai archimedes ne iske bare mein sochna shuru kiya tha aaj bhi hum uske bare mein soch rahe hain aur dusri hai physics walon ka sabse important modeling instrument and that is harmonic oscillator kahi unko kuch takleef hoti hai na wo modeling harmonic oscillator ki sharan mein chale jate hain ki bhai harmonic oscillator lagao einstein ne harmonic oscillator lagaya quantum mechanics develop karne walon ne harmonic oscillator lagaya material science wale harmonic oscillator ke piche pade rehte hain chemistry wale harmonic oscillator ke piche pade rehte hain so we are going to have very nice sessions and uh, hope you enjoyed today's very nicely done session by sapna and the three cheers for her. i think that was great that was just wonderful sapna keep it up you have such a great talent that uh, you can really do wonderful things uh, oh thank you thank you very much sir i have just tried actually i i don't know i am again repeating that i am not an expert i am really learning from this platform also and i am really learning with my students yeah it is a mutual learning you know which happens and that is the beauty of you now these ict tools ghar yes. baithe hum ek dusre se baat kar rahe hain maine ke paas kisne jana tha bangalore yeah. baat karne ya humne kiske kisne jana tha bhatinda bilkul so I, yeah so i'm looking forward for tomorrow's lecture actually so mr yes. ma'am's lecture i've heard lots of lots of things about those lectures yeah so i'm looking Let's, forward yes okay. yes it is uh, great so, uh, how, how many children can bring a pc tomorrow uh, yes uh, i think some students have typed in the chat box they don't have pc but uh, i don't have exact number Please write in the chat box. Yes, if you can bring the PC, write in the chat box if you can bring the PC. Yes, yes, yes. लिखो जरा. सपना मैम. Yes, sir. Then you can uh, do it. I will watch you do. That is the benefit. So Prithvi Raj has said yes, ma'am. Then okay. uh, Rajini uh. has also said yes, ma'am. So we have to. Actually, and there are lots of questions in the chat box. Uh, have uh, oh, you gone? Great, great. So there are a number of people who are saying yes to your yeah. suggestion, ma'am. Great. Okay. So please bring a PC and open a Excel sheet and keep it ready so that whatever little time we can spend, we will ask the children to do it and show it to us. That would be the best uh, part of it. Okay. So bye bye for now. Uh, Kulvinder ji, all the questions which were there have been addressed actually. Addressed actually. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Raj. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Raj. Keep it up. Thank you. You are the star participant of our. Uh, Got a special clap for you. Yes. <laughs> Good. Okay. Thank, so, you. thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Sir. All right. Now I am signing off. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you sir thank you thank you all thank you sure sir sure okay